Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to show you my setup for a beta. Instead of keeping them in the usual clear aquarium, I wanted to try and set up an environment that would give them more privacy and be more like their natural habitat. In nature, fish don't have transparent walls like a, an aquarium tank. Usually they're in a body of water where the only light that is visible is from above. So in my setup, I have this resin planter pot. I got it at Walmart for about $12. This one is about 16 inches in diameter and 12 inches high. It's a good size and it doesn't take up too much space. Make sure you find one that doesn't have holes and that can hold water. Some might have drainage holes, which won't be good. This planter holds about five gallons of water. I wouldn't recommend putting any fish in tiny bowls or tanks. Smaller tanks will obviously have less space for them to swim and also the ammonia buildup from their waste will be quicker. They'll be a lot happier with at least five gallons or more. If you get a bigger planter, you can place it on the floor. In my case, I'm just gonna put it on this simple side table that I got from Ikea. This works well for small fish like a single betta. I wouldn't recommend putting goldfish in anything smaller than 20 or more gallons. They have a lot of waste compared to a betta. Contrary to what you may have read, betas would prefer to live in bigger bodies of water. They're only kept in those tiny cups at the pet store to separate them. Larger tanks not only make it better for them, but for you. The water temperature will remain more constant and the water will be less toxic since there's more of it to dilute their waste, meaning less water changes. And as neat as it may appear to put them in one of those, you know, half gallon containers, in comparison to a human, would you like to live in a small bedroom for the rest of your life or you know versus a bigger apartment or a house i think these planter pots are not only affordable but with the right size they'll be much more comfortable for beta uh, compared to those you know one gallon little fish bowls for the bottom of the pot i'm using fluorite natural substrate make sure you rinse it thoroughly since it can be very muddy rinse it until the water is crystal clear and before putting your fish in it, make sure you add water conditioner to get rid of some of the chemicals from your tap water. When setting up a new aquarium, it won't have the vital beneficial bacteria needed to break down the ammonia that comes from your fish's waste. Because of that, you either have to seed it from an already established tank or add something like Seachem Stability. If you already have an established tank, you can just squeeze some of the water from your sponge filter into the new tank to jumpstart the bacteria growth. Try to always check the ammonia levels of your newly established environment. Don't overfeed. As tempting as it is to feed more, they'll have more waste and which will translate to more ammonia in the water. This particular pot holds 20 liters or about five gallons of water. Uh, for a filter, I have this simple sponge filter driven by an air pump. Sponge filter are perfect for betta since the water flow is very low. Since betas are tropical fish, they do prefer warmer water, so a heater is advised. And finally, for a light source, I got this clip-on LED light from Walmart. For plants, I have these Lucky Bamboo Sticks along with a peace lily, a single water hyacinth, and some duckweed. I also have this uh, tiger lotus and some moss in the planter. Another thing you might add for bettas are almond leaves, which are very good for them. Live plants help filter the water and also provide some hiding places for your fish to feel safe. Along with live plants, I also have some snails in there to act as the cleanup crew. All my tanks have snails and shrimps because they really help get rid of the excess food and algae on the sides of the walls. This is a female veil tail beta that I got from my pet store. Before adding them to the pond, make sure you acclimate them. I usually pour them into a bigger container and I slowly add water from the pond every 5 minutes. Acclimation will get them used to the new water temperature and composition. You can then carefully scoop them out and transfer them to their new home. They'll probably seem timid and want to hide, but in a few hours, they'll thank you for giving them a bigger pond. This female is still very young, and like all fish that are juvenile, they haven't really learned to be afraid of us bad humans yet. So it was curious about this chopstick and followed it around. I've had male betas most of the time, but for this setup, I wanted a female because they are less aggressive. Male betas can't be put together since they are so hostile to one another, while female betas can live in a sorority group in a big enough aquarium. The males are popular for their more elaborate tails, but this female stuck out with its unique marbling on its head. Anytime I hover over the top, it quickly swims up to see what's happening so I know she'll be a friendly fish. One thing to note is that betas are known to jump from their tanks. Personally, from my own experience, I have seen it happen. 
In the wild, they may be in low tide or in a pond or some sort of puddle that is drying out. And they've learned to instinctively survive by puddle jumping. And because of that, they could potentially jump out of your aquarium. So I made this cover using an inexpensive IKEA picture frame. So the picture frame has this sheet of clear plastic that is perfect as a cover. And for about $6, you can get this one called Fispo. It's uh, 16 inches by 20 inches. And I cut it with an X-Acto knife to fit the diameter of the pot. And I also have cutouts for the light. And make sure you have enough openings for air so that they don't suffocate. You also want to take off the protective film on both sides of the sheet. Another option if you don't want to use a cover is to get a larger pot that can hold more water. But only fill it up with 2 inches or so before the rim. This way the fish can't jump over. So you don't necessarily need a boxy glass aquarium to house your beta. They'll have more privacy and probably more room with a planter pot. You can find planters that can fit in with any decor so it doesn't look like an aquarium. I change about 25% of the water weekly and I try not to overfeed them. Just a few pellets a day should do it. Remember water for fish is their life and if they don't have clean fresh water they won't be able to thrive. I hope this gives you some ideas for setting up a home for your beta instead of the typical clear aquariums. With a nicely set up environment, your fish will be a lot happier and live comfortably. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.